the report indicates that it is inconclusive for sibling ship. The family therefore maintains that the body is not that of the subject in this matter and are desirous to be heard on merit on the habeas corpus application. The state, on the other hand, has applied for two days to enable them, uh, yes, to enable the government pathologists complete the test. We have not been told what are the difficulties that the chief government pathologist has encountered has encountered so thus the prayer for time is not based on anything but council's estimation the matter is serious and has been pending for a while which should not be the case in matters of this nature the state has severally been indulged by the court to avail information that they sought to avail the state through council was desirous was determined to have the matter terminated as early as last week the court directed however that the application ought to be prosecuted and a decision made after hearing the parties. The matter would have been heard yesterday were it not for the new development. This court is minded to direct that this matter proceeds to hearing tomorrow, the 25th of October, with or without the report by the Chief Government Pathologist. The state has had ample time to respond to the application, thus the request for two days is not reasonable and is hereby rejected. So let's agree on time tomorrow. This issue of illegal abductions, disappearances, an illegal confinement, which has become the trademark of the Republic of Kenya, <clears throat> and further followed by illegal summary executions, have no place in the modern-day Kenya and cannot be an alternative to the rule of law and constitutional order. We, as the people of Northern Kenya, we are aware that in the past we have been subjected to such historical mistreatments. But what is shocking and what the perpetrators of these heinous crimes don't know is that we have a new, generous constitution. This constitution cannot be replaced by the actions and activities of a criminal gang operating within the habit of the security apparatus. And we are putting you on notice. The people of Kenya, and in particular Yusuf and the people you represent, will not be silenced by this cowardly and illegal approach. What we are seeing right now actually is total deliverance of every step that the government is supposed to take. I want to appreciate the community for your alertness, for your determination, for your courage, or for being around and for standing firm with Yusuf. Because this, what has happened to Honorable Yusuf can happen to any other person. We just need to ask this question. There can only be two speculations. Yusuf was, I am persuaded, and I'm saying this today, that Yusuf is in the hands of the security apparatus, and the abductors are none other than the government security agencies. You know yourselves, there's nothing to fear. You know yourselves. If that was not the case, from the day of the abduction on 13th September to date, this government has the, one of the best investigative machineries in the world. Why has the government, through Safaricom, through other investigative means, not brought to the court the details of use of telephones on all other people that he has interacted with and the CCTV footage of all the places from the place where he was alleged to have boarded a, a taxi to where he was abducted. That clearly indicates that there can be two things. Either the government does not want to investigate or there is another motive. So what we are asking, what we are asking, that era of oppressive approach, we have gone through the Malkamari massacre, we have gone through the Wagala massacre, we have gone through the Garissa massacre. This incident is not going to silence the people of this region. We'll continue to agitate for our rights. If there is an iota of suspicion by anybody, and the law is criminal responsibility is individual, it's individual. We all understand. It. If there is any allegation against Yusuf, why not bring Yusuf to court? Why dump a decomposed body on a Mashuja day when Kenyans ought to celebrate? What was the intention? For people of Wajia to quarrel? To cause mayhem? I, I, I think these criminal elements within the system must be dealt with decisively because 
they are not projecting, they are not promoting, they are not doing anything good for the people of Kenya and by extension the Republic. So I want to thank you and I want to assure you they can lie, they have lied yesterday, they have lied the previous day, they have lied today, for how long will they lie? So I want to thank you and I want to thank also the court for the firm decision that they have made today and I also want to thank the doctors for, you see for us, we believe in the rule of law. This doctor who is a professional has made a firm conclusion and we'll go by that, by the, by the DNA results. So anything else that was meant to mislead us, please don't be misled. They have use of in their hands, let them bring back either as dead or as alive to the community. Any other shenanigan approach, we will not accept. So I want the eyewitness, the taxi driver, identified that the, the people who kidnapped Mushimiwa were armed with AK-47 rifles. The CCTV footages that the family has been looking for, the state has refused to provide those CCTV footages. The police are simply saying they don't have Mushimiu. We have demanded for the data of the telephone handsets. The state has refused to offer. When we became so hard in court, they made an application for this court to terminate this matter. We objected vehemently, and the judge agreed with us and said we were to proceed yesterday. On Sunday, the state announced that a body has been found in Wajir. The state hired a chopper, took the chief government pathologist, the family hired their own pathologist, DNA tests were done. We appeared yesterday in court and told the court to adjourn, we wait for the results today. Today, the family pathologist has brought results from Kemri, the government facility. The government has not produced the results. We are putting the government on notice that if they did not bring the results simply because they want to cook the results, we have already the results from Kemri that have, are conclusive that Mwishimiwa is not the body that was there. I have very firm instructions from the family that that body was a decoy that was taken there so that it will be that Mushimiwa is dead and he has been buried. Therefore, the matter becomes an investigation called an inquiry, an inquest. We are not going to take anything small or less than the government to produce Alive or dead, Mushimiwa, you can see millions of people who have come to Milimani locals in solidarity with Mushimiwa. With a colleague and the family and the police and advocates and went to Wajia to conduct a post-mortem of a body that had been found two days before that in a body of water. We did conduct the post-mortem and found that uh, the subjects had died due to injury to the head. We call it blunt trauma to the head. Subsequently, the body was, because the body was significantly decomposed, and we could not get fingerprints or any other form of identity, it was decided. The only way to confirm who it is was to do 
DNA testing. To do the DNA, then we collected samples from the deceased or the dissident. We did collect samples from the mother of Mueshimiwa and also the brother to Mueshimiwa. We delivered the samples. On behalf of the family, I delivered the samples to Cambridge. We have a special lab for human identification and our results came in by the end of yesterday. Thank you. The results indicate that this is not Moshimiwa Yusuf because when we compare the genetic makeup of the deceased did not match with the mother of Yusuf and did not match with the brother. And for control, we checked the DNA match between the living brother of Yusuf or the present brother of Yusuf who is with us and the mother and it was 99.9%. .9%. The conclusion is that the body we had conducted the autopsy was not the body of Moshimiwa Yusuf. Thank you.